Hey folks, welcome back to the King of Projects and this is our next project. For the Atari that if you saw me work on a couple of videos ago, I got a uh, floppy drive for it. And it's seen better days like most of them have. It's a little beat up. There's a, a bad crack on the face plate all glue. And uh, it doesn't work. As a matter of fact, it doesn't do anything. So, let's take a look and see what needs to be done. The only thing I've done before you uh, came into the room here was take out the screw. So I just need to take off the top. Okay. Unplug the head assembly. See a little bit. I can tell this thing's somebody's been into this before. Uh, half the screws were missing. Uh, it just looked like it had been opened and closed several times. And I think I already see something here. Let me get you down here so you can get a better, closer look and see if you see what I see. Yeah, it's definitely been into. Do you see it? Let me get you closer. There's a leg missing on the floppy controller. They don't work too good that way. Well, I'll order a couple new ones, and with the magic of video, I'll be back when they're here. Okay, we're back. I've got a replacement here. Let's see what happens. There. There. All right, I'm going to keep looking and see if there's anything else. All right, I think I found the problem why the head just kept moving back and forth because the track zero sensor has a broken wire here. Boy, I don't know. I don't know if I can do anything with this or not. It looks like the wire's broken all the way off to the sensor head. Whew. I guess what I'll, I'll take the sensor head off and see if there's anything left. All right, I may be lucky. I don't know if you can see this. But it looks like there may be enough of the sensor leg for me to get a decent solder joint out of it. So let's take a shot. First, we're going to try to add a little solder to what's left of the leg. And make sure there's plenty of flux on the pin, or what's left of the pin. And add some solder to it as well. Yeah, I think. Hmm. I think I'll take off what's left of the pin and try to solder the wire directly to what's left of the leg. It's attached, but I don't know how solid the connection is. If it can just survive me bolting it back to the deck, because it's not a moving part, 
So if it can survive me bolting it back to the deck, we will have a success. So let me release this. Pull the shrink tube up. Should be enough. Definitely don't want it to get hot enough for it to come back off. Well, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see if I can make it all the way to the deck without pulling that wire off. I had to stretch the wire a little bit. It was a bit shorter than the other four. Maybe that's why it had broken. It would. It had been under stress for too long. coffee don't I note the shaking there we go now you really don't have to worry about these moving left to right of course what you have to worry about is back and forth and I made a mark oh you probably can't see it because uh, it's with pencil lead but right there tighten her down there Let's see if that does anything okay there's improvement but yet again not enough what it would do before I know I didn't record it the only thing it would do when you turned it on was that the head would jump forward a small amount and then the head would never move again that's all it would do no matter where the head sat it jumped forward to touch and that was it so this is what it does now it does the head now does what it's supposed to it goes forward and then it reverses itself trying to find track zero but I just turned on the computer. It's searching like it's supposed to, but it's still not seeing it. I think what we're going to check next is rotational speed. Yeah. Now, luckily, this drive has rotational speed adjustment markings on the bottom of the motor. Now, I usually use an incandescent bulb if you can find one, like an old night light. It helps make it show up properly but the outer markings when the drive is running should look like they're not moving if it's at the correct speed ah the camera's picking it up well and as you can see it is definitely not sitting still so we need to adjust this guy okay i don't have it attached to a computer so it's not going to do a spin for very long i'll have to do it several tries but uh, i've got a screwdriver on vr2 that's the adjustable resistor Number two, it's backed by the uh, plug junction where the, the motor plug and assor other assorted ones are. So I'm going to turn it and try to get those lines to stand still. There we go. It's getting better. See what I mean? Let's try it again. I got it pretty close in the first try. One more time, make sure. All 
Okay, I'd say that that's about as close as I'm going to be able to get it. Okay, it's actually been quite a while since the very last section of the video you just watched. And that's because I assembled it and try after try, what happens is it does a good uh, seek to track zero and then that's all it does. And so there was something that kind of caught my eye. I just thought that something looked odd. This, I don't understand why that was a different brand. And so I looked up the uh, circuit diagram and found out that all three of these are supposed to be the same voltage and the same capacity. This is a 356800. This is a 356800. But this is not. This is a 25 volt 4700. Somebody's replaced it and they replaced it with a different size. Now, will it make a difference? Put a little bit of new solder on here so it will melt easily. You need to mix it with some fresh solder. It'd be a lot easier to remove. go. Now, I'm just going to get it heated and see if I can, there we go. I'm just kind of pulling on it from the other side a little bit and there we go. That's all it needed. There we go. I think we've got a enough of a hole to get this in here. I kind of got to get rid of most of it because, you know, these are short legs. I don't have the luxury of just sliding these long legs in there through the holes. I can't see. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. These legs get thicker as they go up toward the body of the capacitor. So I've actually got it through the board. There we go. Well, let's see if that did anything. Now that didn't fix it, but I am glad I replaced it anyway. I didn't like the fact that it was just a, a totally different size and specification. Now when I was checking the schematic for the capacitor replacement, I also happened to stumble on something that made me look at something else. And that was the fact that the floppy controller that was in there is a 2797. But in the schematic, it's a 2793. Now they have the same pinout, but they are not a direct replacement. Now I've seen some things online where people alter a circuit to try to be able to use a 2797 in place of a 93 but and that may be why the leg was missing on here somebody was trying to do it well it didn't work now i managed to dig and dig and find in something else a 2793 and we're going to see what that does now Oh, I see movement. She's doing it. She's booting up. There it is. It works. A, a uh, working Atari floppy drive. So this system's ready to do some work. And I'm ready to take a break. <laughs> well, I hope I didn't bore you, as always. And I uh, hope you'll be with me on my next video. And uh, thanks for watching.